Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of videos about games and the people who played them. And now, here's your host, Joe Stedman. Hi, this is Joe Stedman. Today I'm going to talk about a classic Avalon Hill game, um, a game that some have requested I talk about because Tom Vassell always talks about it on the Dice Tower, but he never shows you. That's because I own it. He traded it to me. That's the game Kremlin. This is the game of the Soviet Union and their political system. It's called the per the Pratilo, Pratilo, I can't pronounce it, I'm horrible at pronunciation. Anyway, uh, you're going to control the government of the Soviet Union. The game comes with um, the board, the characters, which are all fictional, uh, a stack of uh, optional cards for random events that I don't usually use, different markers that you use to mark the characters, and then there's six different, it's a six player game, up to six, and each player will get a faction, and that faction has influence points. It comes with a piece of paper that you will secretly mark how much influence you have on people. And it comes with the rules. And on the back of the rules, there's a chart that you'll use to determine if a person dies or not as they get older. The, also, if you look here, I have the very hard to find um, real life expansion. This is like the real people. So, for instance, uh, here's Joseph Stalin right here. And Vladimir Lenin. These are all real people. Um, and the rules for that, it's called the, the revolution. Now, that's kind of hard to find, I have it. I've never even, un, I've never used them before because I got it because I thought it'd be cool if I wanted to use it teaching history or something to make it more realistic, but it's not as fun because they're real people and you're trying to kill them and it just doesn't seem quite as fun as the fake characters. Now, it also comes with a 20-sided die. It's one of the few games I have that come with a 20-sided die. That's kind of neat. The object of the game is to control, be the faction, because these are different factions, the faction that controls the president or the party chief at the end of the year. Because it's a 10 turn game, and at the end of every year, the party chief will wave to the crowds in the big parade. And if you do that, you get a point. The first, the, if you can do that three times, you win the game. Now, how do you control a character? Well, if you look down here, this here is the uh, influence sheet. You are going to get influence points at the beginning of the game that you secretly assign to each of the characters. Now you're going to get 10 influence points, one of each number. So what I mean is you get 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7, 1, 8, 1, 1, you know, all the way to 10. And then you write it on your character. All right. So you may put 10 points on Mr. Mischief and 4 points on Miss Natasha Nogudnik. Nogudnik. All right, <laughs> and through the course of the game, at your own discretion, you can take markers, faction markers, with numbers on them and reveal who, how much influence you have on that person. Now, whoever has the most influence controls that character. And if you control that character, you get to do whatever special action they get to do according to what job they have in the government. If that character is the character that's the party chief and you have the most influence, then that is who uh, gets the victory point for that round. Now if you look at the board, each character is going to be put on top of a spot here. So they fit right up here, nice little heads. And whoever has the most influence on this person, like this person here, is the KGB head. Well the KGB head gets to purge people. And purging is sending them down to Siberia or killing them off or whatever. Now each character is a special action. And there's also a hierarchy. So if you look in the bottom corner here, if the KGB chief is dead or been purged, then in the bottom corner they got a hierarchy. So whoever is this number on the board will get to do this guy's action. So there's always good this action's always gonna take place, just depending on who controls who. Now in the top corner here, it's kind of like a Euro game because it goes in different rounds, or each round it consists of different phases. And there's a cure, purge, spy, investigation, health, funeral commission, replacement, rehabilitation, and parade phase. And uh, you go one, you go through each of these things, and once you've gone through all eight of these things, then that's the end of the year. Now, there's a turn track on the board, kind of like a Euro game down here in the corner. And uh, you just go through. There's the Kremlin Wall down here in the bottom, which is where you put characters that have been killed. And then there's Siberia on the other side is where you send people that have been uh, uh, exiled out of the country 
And if you go to Siberia, you lose all your influence on them. So whoever controls the party chief gets to move people up. So if you had someone down here, you can, you can decide where they go. And then the people in this row can fill the top row. And then whoever's in this row, if the party chief's dead, can fill this row. Now, that's basically it. There's lots of little pluses and minuses. One neat thing about the game is there's the chart here that you have to roll a 20-sided die on to determine whether or not your candidate dies or gets younger. Now, the way you keep track of how old the character is, if you look down here at character, he's, this guy in this corner here is 68 years old. You got these little numbers, and so after you do certain actions, especially if they're uh, stressful actions, your guy is going to age. And the older he is, the more likely it is that it's going to be for him to die on this chart when you roll your 20-sided die. So you're going to be trying to make people get older. You have the option to send in people to the sanitarium where they have a better odds of being healed. Um, if a person ever gets, you also, there's also the possibility of getting these, uh, these crosses on you, these red crosses, which is sickness. If you get three of those on there, you're going to die. So it's kind of neat because the way the game plays out, the way the game plays out is that you're going to have influence points. And if the person, you may have influence points on someone, let's say you're 10, your highest influence and someone else has three, but they've revealed their three. So even though you control 10 points on that guy, you've not revealed it, so you don't control him. So you, you don't want to necessarily let anybody know that if, as long as that guy's doing what you want to do, you don't reveal those influence points until the very, when he gets up to party chief. And then once he gets up to party chief, wham, you will reveal your influence points and then you're gonna get the victory point for that guy. Or if you reveal influence points, if you if you reveal your points too early, then he becomes a target. And if he becomes a target, he's going to get sent to the Siberia. Uh, there's other, you know, there's you can put influence points on any character you want, even the ones that are just candidates or just down here in the people. It just depends on how you're able to maneuver. The game plays out really well, makes for lots of interaction, lots of role playing. This is why I have my my funny hat on. Uh, trying to talk with a Russian accent and things like this. If you can see this game on eBay, I would highly recommend you pick it up just because it's a, it's a backstabbing game. So there's going to be times in your... It's not as evil as like diplomacy or whatever, but there's definitely a lot of backstabbing and you might do some yelling at each other, but it's all in fun. Um, the artwork is kind of gross and stuff, but it's not that bad. Uh, I wish they'd do a reprint. I would buy a reprint with... But I don't, you know, I have the copy. I guess I wouldn't buy a reprint. There's some optional rules to make the game a little more difficult, but you don't need them unless you, everyone knows how to play the game. Anything you want to add, Monica? No. <laughs> All right. So this is Kremlin, Kremlin by Avalon Hill. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.